Right. Always think about, uh, always be thinking about, okay, what problem are we trying to solve here? Um, is this, uh, what's the right approach to solving this problem? Um, because most of the time, I, kind of, the, I think the core problem there is in a floating mode, it's too reactive to where your mouse is, um, mm -hmm. to raising the window and distracting. So that's, if that's really what we want to solve, what's the best way to solve that without a, a user needing to make a decision mm -hmm. about what setting they should be choosing right. um, to make it work right for them. So those kind of things, but point being uh, like the big features take more time um, and, and more, uh, uh, you know, engineering effort. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've seen, I've seen like Ashley was working on um, panel overflow, for instance, panel when you have, when you have inside of the panel, mm -hmm. a number of applets on, you know, start center and end. Mm -hmm. Um, ah, okay. If you're yeah. on a smaller screen, sometimes those sections need to overflow because you have a whole bunch of apps open in the, in the app tray or something like mm -hmm. that. So she's working on that while we were working towards Alpha 1. And that was a really complex feature to build. Uh, it took a number of weeks. And meanwhile, I'm piling up a number of, of uh, you know just bugs that I'd like to fix for Alpha 1. And she knocks out, she you know, finally knocks out the overflow feature, and then two pages of bugs get fixed in like a week. <laughs> so I don't. So I, I'm more concerned about making sure we don't do you know, feature creep and getting the features in, and then the bugs will will be able to knock those out. You raise a good point about the number of toggles, and this is a problem that KDE's had to deal with, like. Uh towards the end of five into six where they had a lot of toggles where it was it works it's broken where there's no reason for it to be a toggle it's something that should just be auto detected it's it's something the user shouldn't have control over because there's no reason for them to be able to choose it doesn't work and whilst you can't like it it would be like adding a toggle for every single option that you can have in like in your xor config where you don't need that to be there yes it's it's sure you can add them like an engineer if you let them go and add a bunch of toggles for stuff they can add a bunch of toggles for stuff but what value is it actually adding to the user or is it just over complicating what you have there just for the sake of adding more things to choose it's really hard to it's really hard not to just add the toggle because mm -hmm. that's that is the easiest easy way to say let the user decide mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't think we realize <clears throat> excuse me how much, um, how many heuristics are going into our experiences on our phones? Mm -hmm. Like there is a lot going on there just so that things work well on a small screen um, that are kind of things that I often see as suggestions for new features in Cosmic. Mm -hmm. When really it should be, it should be us just doing, just figuring out how to do the right thing. It's harder, it's harder to do engineering wise, perhaps sometimes, um, or it's you know, or it's well. Oh, another good example of that are um, applets in the um, like for power, Bluetooth, notifications, and so forth. Um, when you click on one, you can move over to the next one, and it'll automatically open it for you. I did notice that. Yeah. Okay. So it's it can be annoying though because when you click on one and you start to move up towards the applet. If you cross over the barrier to the next one, it'll switch to the next one, it, and it really shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, should the so there's two routes to take here. One route is okay. Some people really appreciate that, so um, we should, we need a, a a toggle that says okay, open the next applet whenever I hover over it, or require that I click the applet. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the setting option direction of doing it. The other direction of doing it is how about we add a timeout or a delay before the applet starts when you go start on one applet and go to the next one so we don't accidentally trigger it mm -hmm. uh, now if that's not good enough how about a heuristic for the direction that we're moving um, to get the correct intent of the user mm -hmm. um, and then we can we can make that work well for everyone without requiring the toggle just by thinking about it in that direction mm -hmm. instead of you know a, a switch Okay, no, I see where you're, where you're coming from there. The, the only problem you have there is then it, it, you have to then guess what the majority of users are going to think feels good. And obviously you can test it and tweak and things like that. But I guess trying to 
guess what the user is doing there adds a lot more complexity to the problem than just adding a toggle. And I guess that's why the toggle can seem like the, I guess, the better approach to do, at least in the short term. I just don't think it's actually that hard of a problem to solve okay. and make it work for everyone. But that's, um, uh, but and then that's, again, like determining intent is, <laughs> is, um, is that is a harder it is definitely harder but uh, but that is what modern operating systems do much more than i think we realize and it's uh, uh, a better approach i i like to be able to browse through my menus and see things but i don't want them accidentally triggered so i would like to just see it work right <laughs> and go for that uh and, you know go that uh, you know go that direction it right. does take more effort but um uh, that means it's a better product that's fair. That's fair. 